afraid to do anything before the wedding. This is my copy, though, correct? It is. I okay, great. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Like I said, the second legal update is the important It was your pastor's in, uh, or, um, yeah, 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 right. Oh, is that right? Um, uh, what? Oh, um, that we don't have. So. We'll do it this year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now we know. Yeah. I didn't even know. Lifelong about. learner. I, I'm, I'm a lifelong yeah. learner. So. Right. Okay. I should turn off my phone. Two for softball okay. updates. 7 p.m. Everybody ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Today is June 21st, 2023. It is 7 p.m. and we're convening a regular meeting of the Cogite Schools Board of Education. Mr. Mucha, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Decker. Here. Mrs. Etter. Here. Ms. Prouse. Here. Mr. Dobbins. Here, four present, one absent. On behalf of the board, I'd like to welcome all students, staff, parents, and interested community members to tonight's Board of Education meeting. The board values and encourages public comment on education issues. Anyone having an interest in the actions of the board may participate during the public comments portion of this meeting. Please identify yourself on the sign-in sheet. A copy of the board meeting agenda is available to review on our school district's website. Please silence your cell phones during the meeting. Thank you, and with that, would you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So may I have a motion to approve this evening's agenda, please? So moved. Ms. Ms. Decker moves. I'll second. Uh, Mr. Evans, any additions, changes? Just the, the, there's not um, no need for executive session. So when we get to that session, we can section we can kind of skip over. It. We oh, okay. Do so, not need to go into executive session this evening. Okay. So aside from that, are there any other changes, edits? Okay. None. Mr. Muccio, Mr. Evans, none. So hearing that, let's move to a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Decker. Aye. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Aye. Ms. Press. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Moving on to uh, agenda item number three, comments from the public. I see there's no one who's going to comment this evening. So let's move on to uh, item number four, Treasurer's Business, Mr. Muccio. Thank you, Mr. Dobbins. Um, tonight, there are a number of uh, items for approval. Um, so in the consent agenda, I'll ask for, motion, or for items 4A, 5A through K, 6A and B tonight. Okay, so may I have a motion to approve the treasurer's consent agenda items, please? Ms. Ms. Prouse moves, I'll second. Mr. Muccio, yep, just explanation? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch base on a couple of the items. Um, this is one of our heavy meetings as we close the fiscal year. It's going to end 6.30 coming up, fiscal 23. Um, 5A would just be our typical bank reconciliation, financial reports, and payments for board review as of May 31st. I'll really go into those in depth once we close June 30th, the fiscal year, so we can kind of anticipate that we'll go through those um, for about 15, 20 minutes, really, just to see how we ended the fiscal year. Um, for item 5B, our new vendors. We just have three um, asking for for approval. Uh, the first one would be National School Safety and Security Services. Um, that's a security consultant. Estimated amount for a full year's worth would be $1,000. Talk, play, and grow would be special education extended school year services, about 1,400 estimated amount. And the third vendor would be House of Blues for the class of 2024 prom, estimated amount of about $17,000 for the year. Um, item 5C would be our purchase orders for fiscal year 24. Um, we have 12. Uh, the first one would be Curriculum Associates, and that's our iReady software renewal. And iReady is an online program for reading and math that helps teachers determine student needs and monitor progress. That's $14,910. Uh, number two would be Josh and Paper Packaging. That's for a super blanket PO for cafeteria paper and plastic products, um, $10,000. Number three would be New Dairy Hold Co. That's for cafeteria milk, uh, super blanket PO, $10,000. Number four would be Tyranny Brothers. That's for four 65-inch Clever Touch display panels, $9,596. Number five, Alco, that would be for cafeteria detergent and rinse, Super Blanket PO, $8,000. <clears> Number six would be Frontline Technologies Group. That's for our software renewal. Um, that's our 
online absence management and human resources, think hiring software, uh, $7,859.94. Number seven, Pisanic Partners. Uh, th those would be our cafeteria menus, dietitian and nutrition services, blanket PO, um, 7,125. Uh, number eight, Edlio. That's a software renewal for online uh, program for school website management, our website that we have, $7,110. Uh, number nine, Terry Thompson. That's going to be for cafeteria pizza and bagels, super blanket PO, $6,000. Uh, number 10, N2Y, uh, that's our special education software renewal. That's for a learning system and online essentials learning plan. That's $5,195.33. Number 11 would be Pitney Bowes. That's going to be a postage meter refill for $5,000. And number 12, Dreambox Learning. That's going to be a software renewal for an evidence-based online program that provides personalized instruction and intervention to improve reading proficiency, $6,680.48. Um, the next one we would have would be our temporary appropriations for fiscal year 2024. Um, if we open that attachment, um, our total appropriations for fiscal 24 would be $21,446,960.22. The bulk of that coming from our general fund, and that amount is $19,035,101. If we were to look at the second page, that figure comes directly from our five-year forecast that we have. So that's our total expenditures for the year, that $19,035,101. So super easy just to plug in for our appropriations. Then we change this maybe every month or two months as we go, as we get more grants, or if we're going to need to spend more on any of our other funds that we have in place. Um, I thought you're tying that figure back to the five-year forecast. For me, a, 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 an interested user of that report, it helps to add relevance to the uh, to the meaning of the uh, and the purpose of the five-year forecast. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, and something interesting to see too. If we were to go to five A, click on that, and if we go down to the attachments and open T two C. So. This is our whole fiscal year of 2023 so far on that attachment. And we can see all of the different uh, appropriation measures that we have in there. So we can see our temporary for where we started the year and then all the different modifications that we have as we went through. Now we do both. Whenever we modify our appropriations, we change our estimated revenues to kind of concur. So that's why we see revenues on more the left-hand side and then appropriations towards the right as we go. Um, but we can see it's kind of telling our story for our fiscal year. So we changed it at certain board meetings and we have the resolutions uh, below and everything has a tick mark. So if we look at letter A, if you were to scroll down, you could see why we made that change mm -hmm. at that certain date. Um, it actually helps me as we go because we have to show the auditors our beginning and ending. And then we have to show them that our appropriations, uh, we don't exceed those in any way, shape, and form. And then we have to say, okay, our carryover balance plus our revenues is greater than our appropriations that we have in place. So a couple different tests that we go, but um, the temporary appropriations would become the first one in the new fiscal year uh, budget for sexuals that we have. So uh, let's see, our next item that we have would be item E. So this would be our um, renewal agreement with SORSA. Um, if we were to open that attachment too, um, we can see that on the second page there, we actually went out to bid this year. So in my time here, uh, we've had SORSA and we have not gone out to bid. Um, but when we did, we got quotes from Utica and Liberty Insurance and SORSA came in at $94,928 and schools are required to have property insurance. Uh, Utica, number two, came in at 103754 and the third one, Liberty, came in at 122621 So for us, you know, when we compared it, um, you know, we felt SORSA uh, was still the best option that we have going forward as we move. So um, items F, G, H, and I would be our new fiscal 24 grants that we have in place. And these are all of our federal grants that we have come through, and we automatically get these um, from the federal government passed through the Ohio Department of Education, the state level. So myself and Mr. Young, we, we have to sit next week and go through the CCIP to uh, work on budgeting those amounts. 
so we can get what's called the substantially approved date. Uh, so OD has to come in and basically say our plan is you know okay in their eyes as they approve it, and then we're able to spend those grants starting 7-1. If we don't do that, get that substantially approved date, we can't charge any expenditures until we get that from ODE. So that's why we always want to do it as quickly as possible, and they recommend it strongly, the Ohio Department of Education, so we can spend those grants from day one. Um, item J would be uh, approving transfers, and we just have two transfers in place. Um, we have our athletic account, and we have our permanent improvement fund. So the one that we aren't making would be to our food service fund, which is pretty healthy. So we save about $75,000 by not making the transfer this year because the food service account um, doesn't need it as it did in years past. It's doing a little bit better as we go. Um, but we still need 100,000 from the general fund to the athletic fund, um, which matches our five-year forecast for transfers. And then the 50,000 comes into play coming from the general fund to our permanent improvement fund, and that's for the set-aside requirement that we have to set aside um, annually by um, a math you know, equation that's in place, about $175,000. So we get there kind of close with our charter steel agreements, but we had a couple of those drop off. So we only, we only get so much more money from charter steel. We get about 120,000. So the 50,000 is kind of the plug that gets us to the 175, which is what we have to put in for permanent improvements. Um, but again, that matches uh, one of the last pages that we have in the five-year forecast for those transfers out. Uh, the advances out, we do that year to year. Um, it really is nothing more than, you know, for a little time being, we give some money to the general fund, to the grant accounts if there's a deficit, and then we just pull it back in the new fiscal year. So we'll make those um, advances back, uh, board meeting in July or August, one of those two. So we'll see those come back to the general fund. Um, we have the employment contracts for Kathy Martin and Alexa Rodriguez, and um, those are the items I asked for approval tonight. Very good. Well, unless there's any further, any additional questions or comments for Mr. Muccio, we can move to a roll call vote. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Press. Aye. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Decker. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Moving on to number Eight would be treasurer's discussion items. Yep, just uh, three items tonight. The first one, 8A, would be fiscal year end. So we're just in process of closing our fiscal year. Think in mind that the fiscal year ends June 30th, and the new fiscal year begins July 1st. So 7, 1 to 630 would always be a school district's fiscal year. Um, so as we're closing fiscal 23, we're working on closing out our purchase orders, paying remaining invoices, closing out our grants, uh, reviewing accounts and budgets, reviewing our gap, and finalizing end of year reports to Cuyahoga County as we go. Um, also at the same time, we're gonna begin working on fiscal 24, our new fiscal year. So we're gonna work on entering new payroll contracts, sending out salary notices, entering new accounts and budgets, entering new purchase orders, and entering new grants that we have in place. And the last item for discussion would be our levy certificates. Um, if everybody's able to click on that, um, item and we can see two attachments in place. Those two attachments would be our certificates that we got from Cuyahoga County. Now we had a, a little story about how we got there. Um, so it's been an interesting kind of run as we go. So if you guys were to look in the admin content, there's going to be some red um, verbiage there. So we had, um, during our May board meeting passed the first resolution for the levy. So what that resolution did is it allowed me to go to the Cuyahoga County Budget Commission and say this is what the Board of Education here is looking to do. A seven mil operating new levy and a one mil new operating permanent improvement, permanent improvement levy. So an eight mil total levy that we have in place. So I gave those um, certifications to the Budget Commission and the Budget Commission gave me, on May 31st, 2023, um, their original levy certification sheets. Um, a couple days later, I found an error that there was incorrect levy verbiage that was listed on one of those info sheets, had to send it back, and they fixed it. That was June 2nd. June 8th, 
uh, I get another email from the Budget Commission that they were instructed from the state to change how they, Cuyahoga County, calculated property tax revenue, and then they sent me a revised um, info sheet. And the revisions just to round to the nearest $1,000 and not to the dollar. And then I found another error in that revised um, certification where the incorrect Ohio revised code was listed on both of the revised info sheets. So I had to send that back to Calgary County to get them to fix that. So what we're looking at here is the final um, levy certifications. And I have the math broken out on the top half of that. So if anybody's interested, so we have our current operating expense levy, which is seven mills. Um, it talks about our tax year 2022 assessed valuation of 437 million, just divided by a thousand. That gives us $437,995 uh, for the revenue per one mil. Then all we do is multiply that revenue times either seven for our current operating expense levy or one for the permanent improvement levy. And then we get the property tax per year for that levy. So if it's for the current operating expense levy, um, that's going to be three million sixty-six thousand nine, just three million sixty-six thousand rounded. Um, for the next one, the permanent improvement levy, that's going to be four hundred thirty-eight thousand. So that's per year of what we're going to get for those two levies. And then below, I have the annual cost to a homeowner with a household market value of one hundred thousand, and we can see that that amount arrives at two hundred forty-five dollars for the current operating expense levy. $35 for the permanent improvement budget. And when we add those together, we get our $280 that we were looking at before as we go. So this is just what Cuyahoga County gave me. And then what I did with these levy certification info sheets is I gave that to our legal counsel as they work on crafting uh, the verbiage for the second levy that we have to pass, which we're looking to do at the special board meeting July 10th. And that's going to use this information in there to um, craft that. Once we have that passed, um, we would send it to the Board of Elections and then they would work on uh, verbiage with our legal counsel on what it's going to look like when the ballot language comes out. Um, for a time, a timeline of this would be, if this levy passes in November, it would take effect January 1st, but those taxes wouldn't be collected until the following year, correct? We would collect it and I don't my timeline start collecting at 24 if we could pass it this fall we'd start collecting next year right 24 calendar year, calendar year 24 we would start to collect if we pass in spring of 24 we wouldn't begin to collect until 25. january 25. So if we collected in calendar year 24 keep in mind that a fiscal year is half of the calendar year so we would collect half of the levy so if we're collecting january 1st of 2024 we're collecting from that point in time to 6 30 2024 so we're only collecting half of that money in fiscal 24. I'm getting all my timelines you know, confused because I'm closing the year, so I have like so many numbers going on. So we're gonna collect half of it in fiscal 24, and we're gonna collect the full amount in fiscal 25 as we go. That's why it's so crucial if we pass it this year that we begin collecting it as soon as possible, because if we don't in November, we miss a whole year's worth of collection if we put it on in May or November of next year, because we don't collect it until that fall. I'm glad that you had such an extended timeline. When we were talking about this in January and February, it seemed so far off, and the timeline seemed very generous. But here we are. You found four uh, items that needed to be fixed in a short period of time, and that kind of leads us to having greater confidence when we see everything in July 10th meeting that we're all going to we're going to be in good shape. Yep. So thanks for doing that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There's no other questions or comments for Mr. Ramuccio. Let's move on to <coughs> Mr. Evans, superintendent's business. Okay, I ask for items under nine, superintendent's business agreements, contracts, and memberships, A through E for approval and consent agenda, and 10, superintendent's business, employment, A through E on the consent agenda. Great, so may I have a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda items, please? So moved. Ms. Decca moves. I'll second. Mr. Evans, do you have a discussion? Yeah, so real quickly, uh, the, the contract with Trinity, and we up the price on our, our rental to Trinity. They, they, they're going to run it five times. Horizon Marketing is our dismissal manager that we use here. Uh, I looked into what your question uh, about. It doesn't kind of melt for us. That kind of works for us. But we're going to look at that maybe moving forward, Jen, about the possibility. Um, uh, Jack Reinstra is E-rate e support. 
uh, Rip Show Studios for two more years um, uh, with our school photography. Uh, PSI affiliates, nurse and a, and a school health assistant, that actually may be a little bit of a reduction. We had two nurses last year. We won't need a nurse in the high school next year. The, ones, the student that needed the nursing um, services graduated, so that overall that might be a little bit less, but Mr. Young did a really good job of laying out uh, uh, the purchase order for field trips and other uh, items that we might need through the course of the year. Um, some excitement here, a couple hires, uh, really happy. Uh, we'll let them talk after we, we after we approve you. Okay, we always wait here. But, uh, uh, Lo Logan, Logan Zastani, uh, Logan's coming to us from uh, Euclid School. She's been a, a, a coach here for us, uh, a volleyball coach for us, and she's also on in the supplemental contract part for that. As you heard with her husband Zach as well. I think Zach's an educator too. Yep. At Brexel. Uh, we steal from Brexel, so just sit tight. Um, <laughs> um, and but we're excited to bring Logan on uh, in our pre-K area for next year. Uh, I think she's excited to be here. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, she went to the school. She graduated from the school down the road, but I, I didn't let that get in the way of things. So um, she looks she looks good in scarlet and gray. That's okay. And then uh, and then Emma Morrow, um, uh, one of our own, uh, coming out of Mount Union. Emma's going to uh, uh, jump on board with us, and she's going to do a long term sub this uh, a couple long term sub gigs this year as we work her into the system here. And we're excited about these two. I got to sit in on two parts of the uh, uh, interview uh, process with them. The first part, I was just an observer, which I'm, I'm not a good observer because everybody in the room knows I can't keep my mouth shut. But um, I did a really good job of that the first time through, and, and, and both these candidates were incredibly impressive, and I'm just excited to bring them on board. I just think that we're in such a good place right now. Uh, and these two will be such a great ad for us and be great team members here at Cuyahoga Heights, so looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. The rest of the information there are the supplementals. Uh, uh, as far as uh, the chat contracts, you see some coaching and uh, clock operator stuff in there, some supplementals on the miscellaneous pay rates, uh, uh, switchboard operator there for summer. That was a new ad that uh, actually uh, uh, Mr. Detray's daughter is going to kind of take on. We kind of hoped for maybe a, a student to, to take on that. We were drawing blanks for three weeks, and, uh, and one of the adults actually I said, I kind of geared it for a, a student level job, one of our teacher's aides. So uh, uh, I was going to come on and help us with that. And summer transportation contracts that Mr. Um, uh, Young has taken care of for to make sure that we're covered on our summer transportation. So those are the items that I have for approval. Great, great. Uh, I did read both of your, your uh, applications, and you've got great backgrounds, and we sure appreciate you joining our district and wish you a long tenure here. Well, With that? First. I'm sorry? You have to vote first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> here we are. If there's no further questions or comments from Mr. Evans, let's move to a roll call vote. Mrs. Stacko. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Aye. Ms. Press. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Welcome. Congratulations. Yay. We start them on the road. They have a little Kaga Heights gear there that, although I haven't uh, restocked my haberdasher yet, so I'll be working on that for fall. Um, <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> so we're excited they'll get onboarded uh, uh, with uh, Megan Schwab here in the next uh, couple days and when she gets back from some vacation time and ready to go. I was walking the building over there. I'm thinking, well, what are they going to do in this area kind of stuff? So really, really ex exciting times here. Uh, we're in a really, really good place. Uh, and we're just so happy to bring uh, two outstanding candidates on onto our staff here. So anything mm -hmm. you guys, from either one of you, Emma, you go first. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you so much. And thank you for the new red here. I'll just add that to my, um, um, I'm very to be Logan. It's a shorter ride. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Um, we've got a little more business after this. You guys don't need to hang around, but uh, uh, we're really excited to have you. Mr. and Mrs. Morrow, good to see you again. Um, but, uh, see Mr. Morrow's getting some sun, working outside there. Only, only. Back out of college. Thank you very much, and welcome Thank you. to yeah, our welcome. district. Oh, there you go. Very good. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Enjoy that vacation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. You're most welcome. Everybody I look forward to you coming to you. the district. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to get to volleyball. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Nice to see you.
Moving on to agenda item number 12, Mr. Evans, superintendent's comments. Um, got an email from GPD from Jason Noldy day before yesterday with the prices of uh, uh, some of the hillside work and some final prices on that. Um, after I threw up several times, I decided I wasn't gonna send it to you until Friday until I could put the proper amount of lead into that. Um, but the, you know, we've been waiting on some- It's supposed to be less, right? Some closure, huh? With the pile pilings? Yeah. So it's supposed to be less, wasn't it? Well, it is, it's less than the other one. Okay. <laughs> but uh, not a number that I would consider a lot less. But mm -hmm. uh, um, so I'll get in the board's hands, but that's a, uh, you know, as we talk about renovations and things that we need to do, that's one of those kind of first step things that we need to take a look at and see what direction we want to go in. Uh, and Jason also, I, I want, Jason will come in and actually talk to the board about that. When we're ready, I told him I was over, I had a little sticker shock that I needed to settle in and mm -hmm. talk. I'll have a discussion with him and then we'll bring him into a board meeting in August to, t to, to throw some of that up and talk about that. Could you show him some of those questions I had to see so if in August he can maybe, if he's not the one to answer, he can? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, um, state budget, uh, right now it's in committee. Um, uh, I was kind of, I talked to Tony Potagel from the Alliance for Quality Schools. I was kind of chomping at the bit and he, he's selling me down a little bit. He said, because Right now, the the guarantee going from 5% to 10% is is maybe the first positive thing to happen at Cuyahoga High School since House Bill 920 in the late 70s. So I was a little more greedy. I wanted a little bit more than that because we're still less than what the parochials will get per student. And now instead of seven schools receiving less than a million dollars in the state, there's only four. And one of them's us, Danbury Township, uh, Putin Bay, and Kelly's Island. So. Um, but but uh, Tony asked me to wait. Um, uh, Senator Dolan is on the Finance Committee. He is on part of the six-person committee, as is Senator S Serino, who actually covers the North End of Cuyahoga Heights. Here. So two of the three on the Senate side are represent our districts here. Um, we'll see how some of the rest of the stuff shakes out. Um, um, there's there's a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of gerrymandering, and, and I we just need to be ready on short notice if there's something that we really need to get on board and kind of push for here because right now the uh, Senator Huffman as I told you before was kind of pushing for the the house to approve the Senate's version that was not going to happen uh, the, the house wanted nothing to do with the, so he, he didn't get away with kind of bullying them on that part of it so uh, um, but they are in discussions that, and that will get done in the next week or so so things are going to happen relatively quickly as they start to sit down uh, they're beyond testimony at this point in time but they're taking a look at both budgets and seeing What's going to work? The compromise is going to be within those budgets, guaranteed. That, as you can saw, as you saw from both of them, that tuition, um, the vouchers are going to in increase, some some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, we don't think that the accountability piece is going to. The House had an accountability piece. The Senate doesn't want anything to do with the accountability piece. We don't believe that's going to make it, its way through. So there's some things that are still frustrating as we go through this. So, but that's where it's at right now, and it, it'll be all be resolved next week or so. Um, although they did pass an alternate uh, legislation for an alternate budget, were they not be able to come to some kind of compromise by July 1st? And the last thing I wanted to mention, some good news. You know, the, uh, although we, it's a little distant, the Denver Nuggets won the NBA championship. There's a Cuyahoga Heights connection there. As Flip Saunders' son Ryan is the assistant coach for the Nuggets. So if you watched, the, if you watched it all, Ryan was in, and it's and for those of us that knew Flip, Ryan has all the same mannerisms as Flip. Mm -hmm. So as I watched and watch Ryan get up and move and, and kind of some of the things he does is, and I told Ryan this before, I said it, it's like watching Flip, so mm -hmm. a little bit of Cuyahoga Heights in the championship there. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. oh, nice note. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, well thank you for those uh, updates and please keep us updated on the, uh, the budget uh, do well developments. I think I saw in this morning's paper that there was some talk about maybe even trying to extend past June 30th, they can't agree, but who knows. They, they talk about it, but I, they, they they know that that's, right. they got to have a drop dead deadline, otherwise it would extend way beyond, and then they look at the government shut down, which is why they were trying to come up with a second proposal as, for a temporary budget just to operate well. They, none of them want to extend it. They want to, right. they need the hard deadline, they need to get it done. They, the six of them need to sit down in committee, and it's, you know, it's, it's four, uh, four Republicans, two Democrats, the way it's made up right now, three from the House, three from the Senate. So, um, uh, and they, get, they just got to hammer it out. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for those updates. The only good it. part about this is this: that nothing new can be added at this point in time. They can only mess with what's our, uh, in either one of them. Okay. 
well, don't even put every that time, Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to say that because when I, when I say what, you know, how much sillier can it get, it, it gets sillier. So, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing else, then we can move on to agenda item 13, which is board discussion, committee reports, comments. Uh, does anyone have anything for the group tonight? Okay, if, if none, then let's move to agenda item 14, which is uh, a motion to approve the superintendent's attendance at professional conferences uh, per the attachments. Let's get a motion and approve uh, that is seconded, and then Mr. Evans, you can provide some back, some filling. So I'll make a motion to approve the two item, the superintendent's attendance at two professional conferences. Can I have a second, please? Second. Is that our seconds? Mr. Evans? Um, two conferences, the Bassett Fall Conference Center, that's October 3rd and 4th um, in Columbus. The, there's one this Friday that's a free, free that's uh, Understanding Threats Against Schools, and it's at Hocking College. Um, so that I'll be, okay. I'll be on the road by 5 a.m. to make sure I get there by 8.30. But uh, I'm looking. For, I'm hopeful that that's um, better than the last one I went to. I went the one I went to in Columbus was information that we had already heard, and it was kind of almost kind of catching up to us. So there's a lot of people in the room that that was new information from. But but quite honestly, because of uh, Del Vecchio being at the ESC and where we're located, and the resources we have, we tend to be ahead of the curve on a lot of the safety stuff as far as what's happening. So. Um, I, I'm just, you know, this is all a product of the, the new safety uh, department through the Ohio Department of Education, uh, school safety. So I, I'm hopeful that, and I, I'll be honest with you, after I, the other seminar, I was pretty critical in my critique of the, the seminar. I said, you know, this, if you would have given us more information, I wouldn't have wasted my time to come down because everything that you presented, we had seen before, you just kind of gave me a headlight. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, and then, so, okay. um, but I, I get that a lot of the rural schools don't have the opportunities to hear some of those things. So this is new information for a lot of people. Those of us that are near large city with a lot of safety and those kinds of concerns that we, we've kind of heard some of this stuff before. And like I said, the ESC through its first rank safety really does a great job of keeping us on the front edge of what are the newest threats are, the newest safety things are, and that type of thing. To the extent that Ken Trump, who was here for the Channel 19, Ken's also worked with the uh, ESC. Ken's meeting with us tomorrow to look at our what, what we preliminary plan on spending our, our uh, safety grant money on. Um, and I, I want to go over with Ken what his thoughts are about what we have planned and to see what he, how he feels about that because he's really, um, he's, kind of, he's kind of a national figure now, Ken is. When, when, when something happens, he, he, gets, he gets the phone call. Yeah. So. There's no other uh, questions or comments for Mr. Evans. Let's move to a vote, please. <clears throat> Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Zetter. Aye. Mrs. Decker. Aye. Ms. Prowse. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Uh, moving on to future agenda items number 15. What I thought I, we could do this evening is I thought we could perhaps discuss a little bit the July 10th special meeting. It's got a very, right now it has a very small agenda, but I thought that as a group that we could discuss that agenda, and if there's any concerns or questions or what have you, we could um, flesh those out and make whatever changes we need to make. So firstly, um, it's my understanding, Mr. Evans, that you will be away during that meeting. So it'll be the five board members of Mr. Muccio, Mr. Young, great, uh, will be present but uh, Mr. Evans will be on vacation. So um, the, the primary purpose for that meeting is for the board to consider the adoption of resolutions that I think are necessary to put the levy, the proposed levy on the, the November ballot, Am I, that's right? So that's kind of the, pri the primary reason. But then as we kind of talked in the past few meetings, we thought that it might be helpful to add on to that and have an executive session for the board to consider the superintendent's evaluation. Mr. Evans has given us his self-evaluation. And um, one of the other items that came up, and this is for the group to, to, to chime in on or to weigh in on, is um, the idea that we might in July at that meeting want to um, pass a resolution that would formally joined that uh, anti-voucher lawsuit. And I, I, in my own mind, again, I'm interested in what everybody else thinks, but in my own mind, unless there's something that happens at the budget that, that has the effect of negating all of this talk about expan rapid, radical expansion of the uh, voucher program in Ohio, I, I can't 
foresee that I wouldn't want to see this on our July 10th agenda. What, what's the rest of the group think? Was there some um, correspondence this past week about if you do join that, that you have to tell the, the, the State Board of Education wants to know? We, no, it's not, you, the state, it's not the State Board. It's the State Auditor sent out a survey. The State Auditor, okay. From they want to know how the, much you're spending. And under the direction of Matt Huffman. So, and it, the, the, the irony behind that is all that information is readily available. All they had to do is ask the, ask the coalition for a public records request, and they would have given them all. Mm -hmm. So they, what they're doing is they're trying to bully schools. Right. So uh, it just came back out that the actual, uh, I think, sev 17 schools got issued subpoenas because they hadn't done it yet. Because they went a second round, and then a whole bunch of schools fiddled out. So they issued supposedly 17 subpoenas to schools uh, that, that had not yet filled their survey out as to whether or not they were a member of this coalition or not. It, it's, it's long, schools can use, uh, goes, going back to the Derolf case, schools can use money for, legisla for, for legislative activities, like for legal activities like this. So there, mm -hmm. there's nothing illegal, there's nothing, but this is a, this is a bullying tactic mm -hmm. by, by Matt Huffman to try and intimidate school districts to not be a part of this, so. I just, um, I just wanted us to have a discussion about it and see how we felt about that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's you know, they could, they, this, was, this was a one-stop shop if they really want to know who was involved in it. All they had to do was make a public right. records request to the coalition, and they would have given them every, everybody who's a member and so how much they paid. So if we do join this coalition, there would be a possibility that they would reach out to us, too, and, and ask us sure. how much we're if they Funding. do it, if they do it again, I, if they, they would have you to filled go. filled out the survey already and said well, no. I've already, yeah, because at, at the time we weren't members. Okay. They didn't. They, there was no caveat in there that said if you join in July, we want <laughs> you want you to let us know. They just it was it was literally two questions and it was done. And do we remember how much the two dollars per student? Two dollars per student. So we're looking about you, seven, you knew what I was going to ask. Seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah. And Mr. Evans, that's one reason I wanted to have this discussion tonight because. We're going to meet in July and perhaps consider this matter. And you have a lot of the questions and answers for, or a lot of the answers for us. So that's why I thought we could have this discussion tonight. So you talked about the fees. You talked about the background of, of the, uh, the auditor of states inquiries. Um, and then you and Ms. Decker and I had talked on the uh, agenda meeting, and I believe that you or Mr. Mucci were going to reach out to, to Mr. Britton. And I talked to John. I for, it was I didn't Sorry. ask him. I apologize. That's fine. I just talked to John. I didn't ask him about splitting the dollar fifty and the fifty cents. Yeah. Well, that and also just from a legal perspective, yeah. whether there's any um, hidden issues associated with us signing or completing that rather blanket form resolution that, that the coalition has distributed. It's the same resolution that they sent out previously that I had asked them about previously and that he said that the, the board wants to get the resolutions fine. There, there, okay. There was nothing. There's nothing. There's no nothing. deal breakers okay. in, the, in, okay. in the resolution itself. Okay. And would by, by no, July 10th, is the possibility we'll know what's happening in the state about the voucher program? It, it should, the, 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 Budget is supposed to be passed by July 1, so. And that's why I was saying my comments were, unless something totally unforeseen happens where all this voucher expansion goes away, which doesn't seem to be likely, I, I think it would be even more important for us as a group to consider joining this lawsuit, or not. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to, to not let it uh, sit through the summer. But that's, the, that's me. A third scenario sometimes look. plays into it is, is the governor doing some line item vetoes. Uh, they've made it very clear that They've got no indication whatsoever that the governor's going to line out and veto anything that comes out of the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, again, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but I just wanted to kind of walk through what would likely be on that July 10th special meeting agenda. And given that Mr. Evans is here tonight, we can have a, a broader conversation about some of those items that, that he has the insight on. And to date, do we know how many districts have joined this coalition? I, I just saw the email today. Um, um, See how strong they are? I think I read more than a third of Ohio's public school districts, which is roughly 200 districts. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the email. It just came out today. My only question is the timing, because I feel like, Matt, at one point you said not to add a bunch of stuff to that July 10th. No. It's, so but a few you, things is okay. All right. I didn't know if there was, like, a reason to not have it. We would only have to give notice of a special meeting of what we would discuss. So okay. maybe not like 20 items, Got but it. three is kind of, you know. 
Okay. <laughs> Maybe four. Forty percent of a house school districts are members <laughs> of the coalition the currently. Wow, 40%. Forty percent. And that's okay. before June thirtieth. So that was as of March seventh. So it's food, it's food for the for thought for the group to consider, and and if uh, unless you have a strong objection and don't want it on the um, the agenda, again, it's really just a matter of what goes on the agenda and what doesn't. Not not a formal vote at this point. Um, if you prefer that it not show up, tell Mr. Evans or let Mr. Evans know between now and July. You're you're going to be gone after the first week of July, Mr. Evans. Yeah, we're leaving the ninth. We're flying okay. out, so I'll be so gone for two weeks. Sometime, well before the ninth, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one other item with respect to the executive session that I referenced earlier, Ms. Prowse and I had a chance to talk with the board's attorney today, and um, he has a substantial experience as a as a school lawyer, more than forty years experience. He's also served as, as our district's counsel for many years, I believe, since I've been on the board, I'm going to say since 2017 or 18. And we discussed with him what our current uh, practice is relative to how we do evaluations of the superintendent and the treasurer. And um, after hearing our, the, our approach, I, didn't, uh, I don't understand at this point that he has any objections or any concerns or suggestions or recommendations relative to our current approach to how we conduct the evaluation. So I think it was a good effort for us to reach out and get an informed outsider's viewpoint to allow us to hopefully make good decisions. Ms. Prowse, did I miss anything or? No, I think you summarized it well. Okay, thank you. So those would be the items that would appear on the uh, July 10th agenda. M Mr. Mucho, do we need to specify each item on the, uh, on the notice? Yep, I'll okay. do that. Yep. Okay. It, does any of that appear problematic in, in your eyes? Okay. Well, again, all the more reason to let Mr. Muccio know if, if any of these items you don't want to see on the uh, July 10th agenda so that he can uh, craft the uh, public notice accordingly. So thank you. And then we were going to use an executive session to do the superintendent's evaluation? That would be the hope, yeah, because Mr. Evans has already given us his self-evaluation. So okay. as we've done in the past, get together in caucus mm -hmm. and... And then is that a time we're going to do the treasurer's evaluation as well? Uh, Mr. Mr. Mucho, you've got till June 30. I'm, I'm, I'm jokingly saying you've got till June 30. You're under op operating on some pretty tight deadlines right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you with fiscal year end, but I'll work on it. I'll get it. You can take your July 4th holiday and work on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we said we could do it separately, too, if we needed to. If you right? needed yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't, I don't think the expectation was that you'd have yours yeah, done no. by, uh, you your evaluation to. done no, by. I think it certainly makes more sense that the, It'll the, be a lot of let time. that cloud of dust settle in the treasurer's office. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of work going on up there. Get your crayons out and mark mine up as much as you want. Well, okay. <laughs> well, you know, it, it can be lengthy, so maybe right. concentrating on one one executive uh, session might be. Right, and we were calling a special meeting anyhow, so this it saves the district a few dollars at not having to call yet another special meeting to, to move this process along. Good. Okay. So if we're going to meet on July 10th, and that means we're going to also meet later in the month, and the scheduled one was July. Well, at some point, yeah, when, when, we, oh, when we finish up our July 10th 19th? meeting, I, I would hope that we have a pretty good outline as to what the evaluation okay. would look like, and then we'd also uh, be able to work, uh, have a timeline. We always meet with Mr. Evans and, and uh, also Mr. Muccio as we finish their evaluations. I think it's the 19th that we're at, then the actual meeting that was yes. scheduled in July. Right, yes. okay. right. And my okay. understanding is Gary will be back for the July 10th meeting, but I don't know that he's available for the 19th meeting. So... Okay. Um, is there any other comments, questions, uh, concerns about the um, future agenda items? Oh, right there. Mm -hmm. If right not, there. then let's move on to 16. It should be noted the Board of Education members received their agenda several days prior to the actual meeting. Thus, they have had considerable opportunity to study it, ask questions, etc. Upcoming board meetings. All regular meetings will take place in the Baumgartner Auditorium and work sessions will take place in the Bonner Ray Media Center, the professional development room, which is where we're meeting this evening. Monday, July 10th, 2023, a special meeting at 6 p.m. Wednesday, July 19th at 7 p.m. Wednesday, August 9th at 6 p.m. and Wednesday, August 23rd, a regular meeting at 7 p.m. We are going to omit agenda item 17 and I will now make a motion for adjournment. May I have a second? Second. Ms. Edder seconds. 
Thank you. Mr. Roll call vote, please. <clears throat> Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Ms. Etter. Aye. Uh, Mrs. Decker. Aye. Ms. Browse. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. It is 744 and we are adjourned. Thank you. Ooh.